Hello, I have a new fountain pen to show you. So this fountain pen is the Jinhao 35. What I love about this particular Jinhao pen, I only just got it, haven't even tried it. It's just so beautifully simple looking. It's so sleek. And it's 100% metal construction. Well, all of the parts you would touch anyway. This is metal. No, that's a cat. No. no come back, camera. The cat's stealing my camera. Sorry. So the cap snaps on very nicely. And it posts really well as well. Usually when I'm posting a pen completely made out of metal, I'm a bit scared that I'll scratch the main part of the pen, the barrel of the pen, with the cap. But this one here, when I post it, I notice that the uh, there's still a bit of room around the edge here where the cap is meant to meet the barrel. So clearly it connects somewhere way up here probably in the lining of the cap. This one here is the extra fine nib. Now this here is the black model. You could also get one that looks like stainless steel. But I got the black model because I didn't want a shiny pen reflecting the light into my eyes as I draw. Now here is a collection of other Jinhao fountain pens that I have. We've got the Jinhao 599, which is one of my favourites. We've got the Jinhao X750, which is a fantastic feeling pen. But I don't use it very much. I don't know, the pen is just a bit too much for me. It's just insanely heavy. It feels like it was designed to be run over by a car and survive. And also the lines it produces is also insanely thick, but can't be bothered showing you that. Uh, I've got the this cheap Jinhao pen, cheapest Jinhao pen I've ever bought. Got it on special for like 74 cents or something. Then I have the Jinhao 777, which I have just recently reviewed. I've been using this one all the time and it is absolutely fantastic. This one has become my favorite. And now we have the most recent edition, which I had just shown you earlier. The Jinhao 35. It's definitely the best looking Jinhao I've ever seen. This one, while also good quality, is just too fat and heavy, really. Just a personal preference. Now it's time to fill it full of ink. So I'm going to be using the Platinum Carbon ink, which is a fantastic ink. Carbon based, water resistant, Yet it doesn't clog the pen. It comes with a piston converter, which is nice. Let's uh, put even more ink in there. There's a lot of ink in there now. Let's wipe that ink off. Now let's see how well this one performs. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. So far, that feels fantastic. Man, this one can produce a really fine line. Now to me, both the Jinhao 35 and the Jinhao 777 
look like they have exactly the same nib. Now the Jinhao 35, despite its metal construction and so far the fantastic writing experience, only cost me under five Australian dollars. I think it was like four dollars thirty or four dollars fifty, something like that. Yeah, so I think I've discovered something a little bit interesting between these two pens. And that is the ink flow on the lightest pressure flows a lot more easily out of the Jinhao 777. This may have nothing to do with the actual models of pens themselves, but more to do with Jinhao's, you know, manufacturing. Actually, because the ink flow on the Jinhao 35 is slightly less, I can go from a very thin line to a thicker line. This is probably actually better than the... So what's the thinnest line I can make? Like 0.3 millimeters or something? The thickest line is 0.7 or something? So, so far, this seems like a fantastic fountain pen. I love this thing. The only thing I like more in the cheaper Jinhao 777 is the grip. This grip is a fantastic grip. It's vastly more comfortable to hold. Exactly the same design on the Jinhao 599 as well. Oh yeah, you can make a really thin line by using the nib upside down. Okay, well that's very nice, but the only way I can do a long-term review on this is to actually draw with it for a long time. Okay, so welcome to the second half of the video where I give more of a long-term review on this pen. And I get to tell you how much I love or hate the thing. I hate the thing. Yep, that's a bit of a roller coaster. Sorry about that. I know the first half of the video, I was like, oh, it's the greatest thing I've ever bought. The outside of it's fully metal and so black and sleek looking. It also produces a nice reliable line and it looks so beautiful. But the reason why I don't like it is because of a thing called RSI. Yes, this pen just gives me RSI just by looking at the thing, I'm afraid. I sat down with it for half an hour, and the results were pretty immediate. I started to feel it just after 10 minutes. I basically can't draw with the thing, and it's really weird. I don't quite understand how my so-called RSI works, because I can hold a regular pencil, a regular wooden pencil, for as long as I like, and I don't get it. I can hold a plastic fine liner and draw of that for as long as I like, and I don't get it. There's something about this pen. It is very thin, I must admit, and it's also metal and quite slippery, and it's also circular. That might have something to do with it, yes. I do find plastic easier to grip for some reason. Maybe it's because at the uh, molecular level, plastic is more malleable. I guess that's why it's called plastic, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, so after struggling to draw of this thing for probably a good half an hour or more, I just gave up. I just had to let my hand recover before I did any actual damage. Because when I say RSI, which I mentioned earlier, I have no actual injury. It's just that I can feel the initial onset of it happening in my hand. I can feel all my tendons just being stretched and stressed. I can feel pain running up from my knuckles into my wrist. And after feeling that, I have to just admit that it's not worth ever really drawing with the thing. No, because I have other fountain pens which are far more comfortable to hold like that 
Jin House 777, which is basically a Lamy Safari knockoff. That thing is completely made out of plastic, except for the nib, of course, and it has a very comfortable plastic grip as well. It's got two little notches carved out of it where your fingers can easily rest. Oh, that's a great pen. So anyway, besides the whole uh, potential for RSI while using this pen, I can give this pen a good review. But if you want something that you're planning on using for more than five minutes, I would buy something which is more comfortable to hold. Like a Bic Crystal, for example. Yeah, that was a bit harsh. Well, I think I might be going now. Mm -hmm. I was hoping to draw something good, but I'm just scribbling in pain the whole time. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye.